Gender stereotyping is an overgeneralized and preconceived notion about either attributes, characteristics, or roles that should be possessed or performed by either men or women. Though I think the more dangerous gender stereotypes tend to be those targeted towards women, as they, more often than men, limit their capacity to pursue their individual interests or professional careers. Stereotyping is one of two things. It can be assuming someone's role because of their gender, or assuming someone's gender because of how they look, how they dress, and how they act. I think it's a expected behavior that society places on a gender, expecting them to act in a certain way or to do a certain thing and how they act in their life. A preconceived notion of what females should be, how they should act, carry out their lives, and the same thing for males. Um, and I think it's pretty prevalent worldwide. Uh, gender stereotyping is basically when individuals enforce and place certain attributes that are not necessarily gender specific, but they make it gender specific. Like women are supposed to be weak, men are supposed to be strong, women are emotional, men are tough and stoic. And it's just whenever people place these ideals and attributes onto a specific gender without looking at an individual's actual actions or specific characteristics. And their stereotyping is like categorizing or like judging somebody on their gender. Gender stereotyping is assuming someone's gender um, based on their appearance. Gender stereotyping is having a preconceived notion on the personality or behavior of a person or a group of people based off of their gender identity or expression. I'd say gender stereotyping is assuming something about somebody because of their gender, something that has to do with their ability uh, or their interest or even like their character. I see it a lot in politics where a lot of times female politicians will not be as or seen as more acceptable and more necessary than male politics just because they're like oh well they can't run a country because they're too emotional which is disgusting but that's besides the point but uh, gender stereotyping is very prominent in today's society i think in both our direct personal interactions and the media we consume and are influenced by and some relevant examples include our purchasing of children's toys. We buy Barbies for girls and Hot Wheels for boys, and that purchasing pattern tends to lead to incorrect or limiting notions about what can be achieved by women and men alike. Um, I do think gender stereotyping is prominent in today's society, and I think it has been for a long time. Like, I don't think it's gone anywhere. I think it has remained an issue for a while now. I feel like gender stereotyping has gotten better, but it's still an issue. Um, I feel like our generation, like millennials and Gen Zers, are less, like, we don't gender stereotype people as much as older generations. I do not think gender stereotyping is prominent today. I do think that it still exists in some regard, but I don't think it is as prominent as it was in the past. So gender stereotyping, I do think is prominent in our society. I think it has gotten better. I think people are uh, becoming a little more aware of people's individual needs, wants, desires, what they love to do, what they're passionate about. So I think we're breaking down some of the gender stereotyping. Yeah, I definitely think it's prominent in today's society. I mean, hopefully it gets better, and I think some of it has, but it's still not good. <laughs> Um, I think it does affect education and it's really prominent in areas of STEM, especially with women in science. They're really undermined because of the stereotype of women being weaker in science and math. Like leading into education or um, higher education, women might feel like they need to go to school to do something that will be beneficial to their family and will give them most time with their family. Is it becoming an issue in school if someone has to focus more on people 
um, seeing them for who they truly are as opposed to focusing on their academics or, you know, becoming a sort of distraction in their everyday life, an obstacle that they have to get through before they can focus on anything else. I do think it affects our education. Um, I think a lot of women are discouraged from pursuing more STEM majors uh, because men are just kind of seen as more smart by the general population. Um, we actually see it in schools where teachers will actually favor boys more than they will girls, which is disgusting. But in elementary through high school, like boys are more catered to in studies, which kind of pushes girls into a place where they feel like they can pursue a STEM major because they've been kind of brought up in society that teaches them that they're not smart enough or they're not good enough. Uh, having been a coach of some different sports at the high school level and <clears throat> for many, many years, um, and then coming to an elementary school, uh, I think people realize that I have coached for a long time, and so they refer to me as coach, but I have a colleague who has also been a coach and is much younger, uh, but they refer to her as Mrs. And uh, so, yeah, there's a little uh, bias there, I think, and when you say the word coach, I think people think of males first versus females. I wouldn't say that I think gender stereotyping is prominent in education as far as in the classroom with your students. However, I do think that there is a thought that it's mostly women that go into the education field just because you see more women teachers than you do male teachers. For instance, in the school I teach at, we have four different males teaching here and there isn't one single one that is a classroom teacher. So gender stereotyping is relevant in education because usually people assume that teachers are gonna be women, but some of the best teachers I've ever had have been males. Also like within the classroom, say a girl is dressing a little bit more tomboy, like everybody in the class is gonna do something to make that person feel a little bit called out. Education route, I think it affects uh whether I would say men, obviously there's more uh, women in education than men, and so I'd say it kind of, it could affect men whether they really want to be education majors or not. They may want to be an education major at first, but then, you know, uh, they get told by their friends that, uh, um, you know, that's more of like a girl major and that they shouldn't do it. So I think it affects, you know, the number of guys that apply. Uh, I think in a school environment, Gender stereotypes can affect a young person's classroom experience, their academic performance, their academic performance, uh, their subject choice, and their overall well-being. I think the assumptions we make about boys and the assumptions we make about girls uh, are either conscious or unconscious, uh, but they result in students being treated differently or offered different opportunities based on their gender. Uh, in the classroom, I think these stereotypes can manifest themselves in teacher-learner interactions. For example, teachers may be more likely to praise girls for being well-behaved, while boys are more likely to be praised for their ideas or their understanding of a concept. A disruptive girl may be treated differently than a boy who exhibits the exact same behavior. So yeah, I have experienced gender stereotyping before because um, when I was actually applying to go to Clemson, people were like, oh, you should just do nursing. So I was like, I want to do pre-med. I want to be a doctor. But that didn't really seem like a female job. So now I'm in nursing school and it's predominantly women. So I, I have been gender stereotyped, but it's been more of like a people get confused because they associate boys with being more, you know, athletic and sporty and you know just super like tough and i'm not that i'm just very kind of chilled laid back very quiet so a lot of the times i kind of get looked at strange because i'm not super sporty or super like manly i've i've heard so many times like oh you know women like you always get um like let their emotions get in the way of things and they're so ruled by their emotions which is just kind of ridiculous because i think both Men and women have uh, emotions that get in the way of things. I think everyone can say that they have experienced gender stereotyping at some point in time in their life. Of course, I think 
anytime you participate in sports. Um, I know when I was doing driver's training, it was always said that boys are better drivers than girls. Um, in my own classroom yesterday, I actually experienced, um, or I should say witnessed uh, gender stereotyping when at recess I had some girls that wanted to go play football with the boys. And after recess was over, one of the girls came over and she was pretty angry about the fact that nobody threw her the football because they just assumed that girls can't catch or can't play football as well as the boys can. As far as gender stereotyping in my own life, uh, I think I have experienced it, but not in the most dangerous ways. I think the ways in which I've experienced it most is by seeing my peers and other women in society be stereotyped and placed in very confining boxes. Um, musical um, music industry because I am a classically trained musician. Um, like a lot of people have the notion like, oh, um, if you're a boy, you can't play flute or violin or you know something something else like clarinet because it's a girl instrument or if you're a girl then like oh you can't play trombone or bass or um like euphonium because that's like that's a guy instrument but in reality they're all just instruments and you should be able to play the instrument that you choose to play? Um, personally, I don't think I have. Like, nothing really stands out in my mind about being gender stereotyped. I think it's more happens to uh, the girls out there, unfortunately. And so I think that's more of a uh, stereotype I think they face more than uh, us guys do. So I think, first of all, that it was more relevant to women, I think maybe say 10, 20 years ago, but I think what you're starting to see and what I think how you would combat it is, you know, women, you know, calling calling people out, whether it's on social media or standing up for themselves. And so I think if they continue doing that and we all, like, not just women, but all of society, we continue to make a push towards eliminating gender stereotype, I think you'll start seeing a change as a whole ways to combat um, gender stereotyping is to be more aware of how you're acting in situations with other people, how you are addressing people who are like the same gender as you or a different gender from you. I think people have a responsibility to educate not only themselves but their neighbor, um, call out wrong when they see it, and you know directly go against these stereotypes. I think in order to combat gender stereotyping. You just have to get out there and fight for what you want to do. You've got to try really hard and work to make people see that you can do whatever you want to do, whether you are a male or a female. I think ways that we can combat some uh, stereotyping as far as gender are, you know, that we are more accepting of what people uh, are interested in, what they're passionate about. Um, we seem to have a society today that's too interested in uh, pointing out what's wrong with people versus the things that uh, they may bring to the table as far as talents, wants, desires, that type of thing. So to combat gender stereotyping, I would say just be open-minded and accepting of other people and respect the way that somebody is living their life. It's not yours, so just stay out of it. I think dialogue is really big when it comes to this because I think People should just talk about their experiences, big or small, microaggressions, and um, I think that can just help people, other people who might, might have not experienced this, like just gain some kind of consciousness. To combat it, I think we just need to kind of educate ourselves and to know that all these stereotypes are not true, and no matter how much society places them on us and tells them that they are true, they're simply just societal constructs. And we need to kind of check our friends whenever they say certain things or do certain things that kind of perpetuate these stereotypes. And you can't just sit back and let them happen. You have to be a person that is actively trying to dismantle them and get rid of them. Creating a dialogue that sheds light on an issue is incredibly important in combating such problems. I think most of the people we interviewed exemplified that approach. 
Most of the participants um, agreed that gender stereotyping remains an issue in society, although not nearly as prevalent today. I think the greatest significance of the conversation and dialogue lied in that most of the people agreed that the best way to combat gender stereotyping is to address the issues and speak up when they hear someone say something discriminatory. The fact that so many people are open to having this conversation should encourage us to do the same. And if we can correct ourselves and others when addressing gender, we can demonstrate to our own students that they are capable of so much, regardless of their gender. I think going into this project, I thought we would get more diverse answers, I guess you could say, but it kind of made me feel really good knowing that even people of different ages and different backgrounds from different places, they all virtually kind of came to the same idea that, you know, gender stereotyping is an issue. Sadly, it's predominantly with women and even in education, like people, see young girls different than they see young boys. So it was really nice to know that everyone had a grasp on what it was, even though they all came up with their own definitions, they all went together. And it was also really nice knowing that even people who are a little bit older and they have their own kids, they virtually agree that people need to mind their own business. And when it comes to combating it, you need to stand up for yourself. And if you can't stand up for yourself, you know, someone else needs to help you because this is an issue that will only go away with fighting it off, basically.